Welcome to After School with Mr. Van Huss, episode 27. Now my guest today first appeared on X Factor when he was about 16 years old. Since then, he's gone on to be one of the hottest touring acts out there. He's a great singer and songwriter. It's my pleasure to welcome Mr. Skylar Anderson. So welcome to After School with Mr. Van Huss. Today I'm here with Skylar Anderson. Skylar, how you doing this morning? I'm doing great, man. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Oh, man, I'm so, so happy to have you on. I know I was uh, hosting the CMA Spotlight stage a couple of years ago when uh, I was lucky enough for, for you to play that stage. And uh, I got to, you know, witness your act from uh, from basically the front row, standing right there by the side of the stage. And uh, you're an amazing performer. And I became a fan very, very quickly. Um, Thank you. And know what a, a dynamic songwriter and singer and everything that you are. So I was really excited that you would take time to uh, to talk to me and talk to my students for a, a couple of minutes today. Oh, so thank you, man. For anybody who might not already be familiar with who Skylar Anderson is, I'm going to let you introduce yourself and just tell us what it is that you do. Well, yeah, I'm Skylar Anderson. I'm a singer, songwriter, artist, travel across the world and play music and play on Broadway a little bit. And um, yeah, that's, that's what I do for a living. That's, <laughs> that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> now you first appeared on X factor when you were like 16 years old, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, that's crazy. I was playing yesterday um, at chiefs um, and yeah, I, I was telling that story and a lot of people would start looking me up. Yeah. I was on the X factor when I was 16, when it first came to the U S um, I was on that show and um, it was fun. I made it to the top eight boys out of like 254,000 people. That was a good time. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. I uh, I was watching, I went back and watched your like first audition. And oh, I wish they would, like, I wish they would delete those. Oh man, it's, no, it was good. Like being a teacher who is around teenagers every single day, like for anybody that hasn't seen it, your music cut off, like just a couple of lines into the song and man, you just kept going and you just right. nailed it. And I know the judges were impressed with that. And like I said, being somebody who's around like students every day and teenagers, that's that's showing a lot of maturity at 16 years old to be able to like, you know, do something like that and just keep on going and just not worry. About a lot it. of people thought a lot of people think that was like staged. And uh, every every time I like a lot of people ask me, like, was that staged? They meant to do that. I was like, no, that was not staged. That really happened. Home by like out of everybody that went to that audition that day, it only happened to me. And like it literally, like that was like the format of my mind was like, no, me and my mom, like, we took a bus to Chicago and and I was like, I'm not stopping. This is it. This, this is it. all I got right now. <laughs> That's that really was like the mentality of like. I might as well keep going. Like, there's no way to like stop now. <laughs> right. There's a very important lesson to be learned there because I think you know it. It showed the uh, the maturity and professionalism you even had at 16 years old to be able to just you know take something that might have knocked some people down and you made something special out of it. And when you got Paul Abdul sitting out there, you know, talking about how good you are with it, that's that's a yeah. good thing. <laughs> <laughs> very blessed for sure. So what influenced you to do what you do? What made you want to be a, a singer, songwriter, and entertainer? Well, to be honest, um, I never wanted to be a singer. Um, it wasn't planned. It was nothing I uh, really wanted to do at all. I didn't have, my dreams was to be like a, a principal or like, or like a police officer or something like that. You know, I wanted to help the, it was something in my dreams to help like younger kids, um, you know, um, and I um, was in high school and I guess the choir teacher saw something in me that I didn't see. I didn't even take choir. Choir wasn't even on my thing. I just was so cool with the choir teacher that I would stop by in between classes, the choir room or like after school and like sit with the choir students, and like see what they're doing. And um, he was like, you should try out for this thing called, um, I'm from a place called South Haven, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. It's right next to Memphis. It's right under Memphis, like the first spot in Mississippi. And he was like, uh, you should um, you should try for this thing called South Haven Idol. We're having like a South Haven Idol thing. And you end up going against like the Soto County, all the schools at the end of it. And I ended up winning the whole thing. But I was just trying to be a class clown. And just I just did it. 
And um, I ended up winning it all. And about two weeks later, I'm like 6.30 in the morning, I'm brushing my teeth. And my mom, I come out, I come out the restroom, and my mom was watching the news, and she's like, X Factor's coming to town. You should audition. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay. And ended up signing up for it and um, ended up, like, taking it far. So when I got off the X Factor, after everything happened with the X Factor, I literally, like, came home, and I I didn't pick up a guitar, really. I didn't um do anything. I just... I want to make sure it was it was it serious? Like, is this like what I wanted to do? And um ended up I had my um I was laying in bed, I'll never forget this. I was laying in bed at um and my buddy dad called me and they were at a place called South Haven Pizza that was up the road. And he was like, Hey, the owner son is here. He's gonna benefit for St. Jude. He's like, I know you don't do this. Um he was like, Well, can we come and pick you up? And can you can't come and sing a couple of songs um, just for the St. Jude kids? And I was like, yeah, why not? You know, I wasn't doing anything. Um, and um, I ended up going up there and singing in what ended up being an hour because <laughs> um, it was so fun. And I was like, and after that, um, I was like, this is definitely what I want to do. So I started picking up the guitar. Uh, I didn't know how to play guitar that well either. So every day I would come home after that, every day I came home after school for three hours, I would lock myself in my room and I would learn guitar for three hours. I, my phone would be off. I was just looking at YouTube videos. And for those three hours before my mom came home from work, I would just lock myself in my room, learn guitar. Then I would go out and do everything else. But uh, And it became a passion. Then I got a job with my buddy, Jamie Russian and, um, and his family with um, Russian pump plumbing. And um, I worked that job for a little bit, but I found out that I could make a lot more money by sitting on a bar stool doing what I love. <laughs> <laughs> instead, of going, instead of going to work, um, construction, while I was in high school, I did it while I was in high school. And, um, and um, it was just more of like, it weighed on me for sure. It was just like, this is, this is what you're meant to, to do. And, you uh, know, and I'm glad I stuck with it for sure. You know, it got me a lot of places. Um, I'm very blessed. I've been on the road with a lot of great people, done a lot of songwriting with a lot of great people. And um, it's been, I'm glad I stuck with it for sure. So that was like, it, it never was in my dreams. It's wow. I, I still say to this day, it, it never was in my dreams to to be even this far in, in the music industry for sure. You know, I started out, uh, I can relate to that a lot because I started out fresh out of college working for CMA full time. And that's why I still go back and like, you know, help them out with the the CMA Fest gig and stuff like that. Um, but I never dreamed I'd be a teacher. And like I was like 30 before I went back to school to get my master's degree in education and became a teacher. And I, I think sometimes they're uh, probably the good Lord up there has some some plans for us that we don't yeah. see and we end up doing them and it's you know it works out kind of cool sometimes so yeah. who are some of your musical heroes like who kind of influenced your sound or um, who'd you listen to growing up that kind of thing um well when I, when I was growing up it was mostly like David Ruffin um it was it was uh, Bobby Womack, Aretha Franklin, um, those Otis Redding. I, that's what I grew up on. I grew up on that. Um, I didn't get in full contact with like country music um, until I became more of a teenager. You know, late middle school. Um, it was right when kind of there was record crossed over, to be honest. And I was watching CMT one day, and all right, had just came out by Darius Rucker. Cause I'm doing all right. That's a good song. I yeah, got I got to put that in my set list. I'm <laughs> just just added to my brain. But um, <laughs> um, and in case to hear that song, I will go to bed at night with the radio on just to hear that song on the radio. Mm -hmm. But every song that came on the radio reminded me of like my my life, like it, like Zach Brown Band, Chicken Fry, like all of that was just out. And then I got introduced to a guy named Eric Church, um, which 
kind of like did it for me. Eric Church was the guy that like made me like, okay, this, this is what country music is about. This is what, this is what it should be. Like Eric Church was the guy who like kind of made his own path. And um, that really made me like really want to do this um, country thing. And um, not just because of, you know, a lot of people don't know what happened behind closed doors, but it's a lot. It's a lot that goes on in this music business. I'm sure you know. You know, it's 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 crazy. But Eric Church was the type of guy that took his own lane and made his own path in country music, and that's what I did. Like, if you ever come to my shows or you hear my songwriting, it's you can hear it all in there. It's it's what I grew up on in church. It's um, kind of like a Motown soul feel, and it's it's country. Um, so that's what kind of influenced me, but that, I grew up on old school Motown, um, soul music, and Eric Church, people like Billy Carrington, um, Craig Morgan, Trace Atkins. That that kind of like and that kind of really like molded it for me, like really made me who I am. I took all of those people and like kind of made one person with that. That's very very cool. And you've spent some time over the last couple of weeks um, opening up Eric Church's bar. Oh, you? yeah, man. That's it's been wild. <laughs> that's another reason I haven't gotten any sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. So that, that's a cool story. So um, I knew Eric Church bar was coming to town. Um, they had just, just started on the building. Um, this was months ago. I mean, it's about seven months ago. Um, I was doing Craig Campbell's as a, a a coffee shop out in Eaglesville. And he wanted me to come and do his one year anniversary. Just sing a few songs. He was having all type of artists there. And me and my wife ended up going and I ended up doing a set there. And um, the lady who was Heather, thank God for her, and her mom was there. Didn't, didn't know this at all. I, I'm just there to support Craig Campbell. Um, and while I'm singing, the lady's mom come up to um, my wife while I'm singing. I didn't know this until afterwards. And she was like, my, my daughter is opening Eric Church's bar and we would love for him to play. And my wife would be like, wait till you get off stage. She knows I'm an Eric Church fan. She's like, wait till you get off stage. She's going to be like crazy. Um, so when I got off stage and introduced me to um, Heather's mom and then Heather came up and was like yes come and meet us <clears throat> so I ended up going to meet them at the warehouse where they were getting everything together and um, I'm the first band they hired I'm the first band they hired and they gave me a Chiefs hat and um, I was seeing all the things the models that they were going to put in the bar and all that and John John O'Neill great guy who books Eric Church's bar um, he's like yeah welcome to the family he was showing me all these things and how the bar is going to look. And I was like, oh man, this is what we've been needing on Broadway. And um, yeah, they I didn't know I was supposed to play the opening date. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to play, I thought I was going to be the next day. But he was like, oh, you got to play Thursday night, like when we open. Um, and I was like, oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, that's, that's right. And it was the time. And I've been, I've been there. Like that's my second home now. I've been there since they opened. <laughs> like, wow. It's been a while. It's been a lot of fun. Um, meeting a lot of great people. Um, and it's something new. It's more, um, it's not like your Broadway, you know, you get your boots good and boogie and, you know, the same old cliche songs. Eric Church has created a space where um, us as artists, um, the, the misunderstood or the Mr. Understood can come in and like be their own artists, sing more originals. Don't, don't, don't just take, don't just sing the next wagon wheel, you know, sing, be you. And so that's been the best thing about Chiefs and every church's spot. Like it's more of a place where we don't have to sing for the the bridemaids and, you know, the, the next Morgan Wallen song, or, which don't get me wrong, that's all cool. And I'm not sitting on any of my toes that does that because I did it for years. I mean, I've been in this town and writing in this town and, and playing this town since I was 17, 16, 17. So but it's a place where he created where we can come and just be our own artist. You know, you don't have to do all the other stuff that Broadway is doing. And it's, it's a really cool spot, you know, and he's doing shows there and bringing his songwriters in to do shows there. And um, it's been fun to like 
be able to do that and be able to like get back to my roots and know what I know, you know? Yeah. I hope I get to check out a show there sometime because it, it seems like it's really cool and everything I've seen from it so far, it looks like it's really, really cool. Nothing, nothing else. Like it is, it is, he created a small ramen in there. Yeah. It like, it's That's crazy. Awesome. He created a small ramen. It's a ticketed place mm. where you have to pay to like buy tickets. And it's like, they have the church pews and like the, the windows, like it's, and it seats like 350 people. It's, it's an amazing. <laughs> really cool. Uh, yeah. You know, when, when he was first starting out, like when sinners like me had just kind of started oh, yeah. like that album, I was still a CMA at that point. That was probably just right before I left, um, like left there full time. And uh, they used to have artists come into our atrium and play like, you know, up and coming people, sometimes legends, a little bit of everybody. And uh, there was a day Eric Church came in there. And uh, like I said, he he maybe had one or two singles on the radio at that point in time. Um, and he came in and just sat on a stool in our atrium for our staff and played like four or five songs. And yeah. I was a fan before that because I I picked up on him pretty early and was like, man, this guy's got something different. It's this, yeah. you know, just that country rock mix that he had. It's like, that's my music. You know, that's that's what I always grew up listening to. And uh, it just, it blew me away. And I've seen him a few times here and there. And like, it just, it never gets old. Yeah. Just, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. And he, and he does, and he does him perfect. Like nobody yeah. else can, like what Eric Church does. Like, you got these artists that's come out these days that's trying to be the next Luke Combs, be the next Hart, Hardy or Morgan Wallen. But nobody can do what Eric Church does. And that's the most mind blowing thing to me. Like, Nobody can imitate him. Nobody can be like, you know, and there's no next Eric Church. You know, everybody can get a mullet. Everybody can, you know, get a beard. But nobody can do what Eric Church does, no matter how hard you try. So that's the cool thing. That's fascinating about him to me, you know. Absolutely. So I know we were talking about the uh, the choir teacher in school who you had some contact with. Um, did you have any other favorite teachers or any other mentors along the way that kind of you know, pushed you along or kind of inspired you to be successful? Yeah. Um, so the choir teacher, yeah, he was a big part in uh, um, uh, my pastor, uh, Pastor Ronnie Tony, who I grew up who, um My dad passed when I was uh, 11, and my dad gave uh, my pastor the torch to, to raise me after that. You know, because my dad knew he was dying of cancer. And, um, so he was a big inspiration in my life. And that's why, that's another reason I wanted to be something like a principal, a pastor, or something, something to help the youth. And um, <clears throat> he was a big inspiration in my life. And um, man, my mom, my mom is, I'm a, I'm a mama's boy. So um, my mom works hard. She's worked all her life. Um, and um, she just told me how to get through her mom. I'm, I'm the youngest out of six kids. So I was the last one, you know, with my mom out there. Everybody moved out. So um, that was to me a lot of, you know, inspiration, just seeing how hard she worked and how hard she kept going, even after, even after you losing my dad and, and my oldest brother. And she just kept going. Um, she's a fighter. And um, so that's where I get the, you know, the kind of like to get up to go from, like, no matter how hard you think you got it, there's somebody out there that got it worse than you. Yeah. And um and there's days that I don't I don't want to get up. You know, there's days that I'm not getting in the house until five at six in the morning, you know. Um but you know, it's the things that like you gotta get up, you gotta be a part of your family, you gotta go out and hang out with your kid, take him to the water, hang out with your daughter, you know, spend some time with her and and do it all again the next day. And um my thing of just keep going is, is, is big for me. So uh, my mom was a big inspiration. She helped me when I was doing this, started off with this music thing. She's the one that like really pushed me, like to keep going and keep going and keep going. And um, she's very proud now that she did that. <laughs> she lets me know for sure. Um, <laughs> um, so, and that's, that's just been a big part, you know, and I, I've learned from a lot of people in life, like even my siblings, you know, I just learned, and and even like when I came to town, like I would always, I don't do it anymore because I'm getting a little too old for it. But I would always go to Broadway 
like two and a half, three hours earlier before my show started. Um, and I would just walk around each and every bar and just look at artists and look at musicians, see what they're doing. And it taught me how to like what to do and what not to do. How can I create my own show? So if you ever like see my full band show, it's totally different. It's it's not anything we we don't do the songs the same as the radio. Like that's that's not we like we add our own twist to it. And uh, my band is my band. My band been with me for years, so they know everything I'm going to do. They know the next step, the next octave, the next key, and it's it's more of a and it's it's I hate to say this, but it's so real. It's more of a um, kind of like a, a a country church experience. You know, it's it's fun. Uh, we literally have fun. We don't sit there and just. You know, you go on Broadway now and you, or you see these musicians now who just tired out and just sit there and play with their guitar mm-hmm. on stage with their band. It's like no emotion, no contact. You know, you can't like you can't reach the people in the crowd. And, you know, everybody's having fun on Broadway, of course. Everybody's drinking, having a good time. But um, my thing is like my show, I kind of want to be an experience. Like I want you to leave them like, oh, my God. You know, so. I'm usually on top of bars. I'm usually <laughs> on, I'm, I'm usually the wild one. Um, um, and then my acoustic shows is that's my time to rest. That's my time to sit on the bar stool and tell you stories and and um, sing you songs that I haven't played in years. Songs that I wrote when I was in high school, middle school. So my my seven month year old is just screaming out there. I'm sorry. Um, uh, yeah, I can't even hear it. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it's been like. Yeah, that's like the inspiration. I get I get a lot of inspiration from a lot of people. You know, it's just it like I always say this, and I don't mean to exaggerate, but I I think God has blessed me with like a third eye, like to just kind of like see through certain things and like know what to do and what not to do. It's, I guess I guess you can call it common sense. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I tell you, we, uh, I think you and I probably have more in common than I even realized. I lost my dad when I was 20, and that was the hardest thing I ever went through. So I can't imagine going through it at 11 um, because that was almost a decade earlier than me. So um, that's hard. (laughs) I totally get that. Um, I know we kind of touched on this a little bit right here, but uh, you're going to have the year of some high school students here, okay? What is one life lesson that you think you've learned along the way that you would pass on to them? Let the next car pass. And um, I say that because, you know, I'm about to be 30, um, 29, but uh, that's my thing in life. Let the next car pass. Let, Let that car pass. Even like when we're driving, you know, everybody's so in a rush. You, know, you don't want this car to get over. You don't want, like, no, you, like, let the car, it's okay. Let that car pass. Even when you make it in life, let, let the next car come and pass. It's, and it's about staying in your lane. Like, I know what I can do. I know what I can't do. I know that no matter if there's traffic, we're not going anywhere. Like, the other day, that's a great example. The other day, we were in the garage. We got done playing Chiefs, and it's 3 in the morning. And the garage that we park at, man, my band, we always park on the ninth floor to meet on the ninth floor. We hang out there before the show and after the show. And these cars are just lined up. So we know we're not going anywhere for at least an hour. You know, so we're just sitting there hanging out, talking. And um, they're, they're beeping the horn. They're beeping the horn in the garage. And I'm like, nobody's can get anywhere. Nobody can go in. It's like back up. Like, it's just no, like, why are you beeping the horn? And, and me in life and, and my wife will tell you this, like I have patience. I have like, I'm the most patient guy ever. Like it takes a lot for me to get upset or angry. And, um, and I'm thinking to myself, like, just calm down, chill. It's, it's okay. You know, you, there's two things you can't control and that's your past and that's your future. So just chill, live in the moment. It's, it's okay. Turn, turn a podcast on, like turn, turn some music on, like, and they're beeping the horn. I'm like, why, why are they beeping the horn at cars that's, that cannot clearly do anything? Like, 
there's nobody here to help us. It's it's three thirty in the morning. You know, it's it's just calm down. Like that's my thing. Let the next let the next car pass. Be patient in life. Period. Like I think patience is um, patience is uh, very important, and that's just to me. I'm, I'm more of a, a chill guy. Like it, it. Like there's a lot of things in life you can't control. You know, and things you can't control is like. You know, just just wait, you know, just chill, wait on your turn, stay in your lane and, and know who you are as a person. I, and I always caption this, like when I post, like, just be you. Like there's like God created only you. You know, you are you. There's no other person. Like I was just talking about every church, like there's no other person that can imitate, you know, you are you. So um, that's important to me. And I think that should be important to a lot of people that's like coming up and. I've done it since I was on the X Factor. I've always just tried to stay in my lane. I didn't. I never tried to be like anybody else. I never tried to, you know, sing or play like anybody else. I never tried to dress like anybody else. I'm like, just, just be you. And if you be you, that's there's only one you. And you. Like that's incredible. That's the incredible thing about God and and this world. And um, and if you let the next car over, you know that that's showing love. And if we can show love and and you know. That's a great thing. If you can show love, maybe it can brush off with somebody else and that next person can show love to the next person they see. And, um, and that's very important to me. Great advice, man. Skyler, you are a very neat, talented guy. And I am Thanks, very man. honored that, that you took the time to talk to me and my students today. Um, and I greatly appreciate it. And I hope our, our paths will cross again somewhere down the road and I'll be able to yeah. get out to a show or something. Uh, but thank you. Thank you so much for talking to me today a little bit. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. I definitely appreciate it. All right. And it was great catching up with you. And thanks for staying after school with Mr. Van Huss. Thank you, man.